Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your source filmmaker tip of the day. This is tip of the day number two, and I thank you for being here uh, to check this out. Uh, one of the things that I found uh, watching and following the forum threads is that there's a pretty common mistake that people make when using the Source Filmmaker, and that's not realizing that a lot of the models have two versions, and only one of those versions is actually able uh, to do facial animations, specifically the mouth animations, so that you can synchronize, you can do lip syncing with the audio. And a lot of people have asked, hey, I loaded the scout model or I loaded the heavy model and I did all this work and then I found out I couldn't do the vocal animations to synchronize with the dialogue track and what do I do uh, because they don't want to have to redo all that work. Well, never fear. I am here to show you how you can fix that. Oh, of course, I don't have a camera. Okay, so first I'm going to create a new camera. I'm uh, once again in my favorite map for these tips, stage.bsp. It's a wonderful way to do this. Switch over here to the work camera so that I can get kind of a different perspective. I'm still learning how to use these keys to navigate properly. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go over here to the animation set editor and I am going to create an animation set for a new model. Now I am going to intentionally select the wrong model so I can take you through this. But for future reference, you're getting two tips of the day, by the way. Tip of the day number one is always select the one here that says HWM slash and then the model name. So HWM slash heavy.model or HWM slash scout.mdl. That's the one you want to be able to do the uh, face poser animations because this one down here, player slash scout MDL or player slash whatever dot MDL, uh, is a perfectly serviceable model, but it won't do the face poser animations. It won't do phoneme extraction. So I'm going to spawn this sucker, switch over here to the motion editor, and then I am going to select the scout here and place him on the red dot. And now I'm going to move in a little bit so I can actually get a, a decent angle. How's that? Sure. This looks good. Press enter on that to accept the fact that I moved him. Now I go up here and I am going to just do a very simple thing here, a test. I'm just going to import an animation sequence and I'm just going to, I'm going to import the, uh, the one for selection menu, selection menu underscore anim one. In the case of the scout, it's where if he was holding his scatter gun, he would flip it around and, and look all badass with his hand on his hip. And, uh, so again, it looks like, the scout moved a little bit when I applied that, so I'm going to put him back in place. Oops. No, I don't want him to tip. There we go. Again, I'm going to set up the shot. I don't know why I'm doing all this. <laughs> all right. So hit enter, and I play it, and looks pretty good, except for the fact that his eyes are all borked up. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And this is something, if you've been following the tutorials, you should know how to do this. But if you don't, uh, just expand the face and the eyes and grab the view target. Okay, you're in the motion editor, grab the view target, and then press Alt-V. Alt-V, he said, come on. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> Can't do this. There we go, Alt-V. Uh, and then you can oops, wrong, grab the handle here and then press the shift key and it'll create this little, this little doohickey here. And I like to just put it right between his eyes because now I can drag the view target around and make him look at anything I want. And it's a lot simpler than doing, modifying each slider up there. So I kind of like him to look right here and then I, there we go. Okay, so I like this. This is good. Now let's pretend that I've gone through this sequence and then I realize, okay, I want to add a vocal track and I want to uh, uh, make him say something. So I'm going to go back here to the timeline editor and I'm going to say dialogue, add clip to track. And let's see, what do I want here? How about... What's a good one? I want Wicked. That'll work. Okay. 
So then I say show waveform. Okay, it's right there. I can hear it. And I say extract phonemes. Wicked. And it found it. So, okay, here we go. I go back here. Oh my goodness, he didn't say anything. Why not? Oh, of course, it's because I don't have the phonemes and this model won't do that. Okay, well, I'm going to fix that. So the first thing I'm just going to do, I'm going to undo the extraction of the phonemes. I'm going to, I'm just going to go back a little bit uh, so that I am back to, I've just finished putting the model in place. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scout and I'm going to say show an element viewer. I'm going to say animation set. And then I'm going to expand the game model node. Now be careful when you're using the element viewer. As they say in the Valve tutorials, you can screw things up really badly here and actually place your entire save and your entire project into an unrecoverable state. Uh, so be really careful. So I'm going to type in HWM slash and just press enter. Oh my goodness, he got all screwed up. He's all messed up. What do we do about that? Well. I'm going to go back here to the animation set editor and I'm going to right click on the scout and I'm going to say down to utilities and say reattach to model. And now when I scrub the playhead back and forth, everything is fine. Okay, great. Now I can see that now I have the mid face, the lower face, the tongue, the body. But if you look up here next to where it says procedural, there's a few problems that I'm still seeing. The first one is I don't have the phonemes tab. That means I still can't import audio animations. And the reason is because while I have changed the model associated with the animation set, I haven't actually changed what the animation set thinks is going on in Source Filmmaker. But that's okay. Because the reason I did this was because now the animation set is associated with the new model and it has all of the right little hooks, at least under the covers, to allow me to do this. I'm going to take the scout model uh, and I am going to export animation. Also, you might have noticed that his eyes are screwed up. Don't worry about that uh, because that'll get fixed when we reimport. So you can see I've already got scout anim test DMX here. You need to pick a, uh, a DMX name, just give it a name, and export it. Now I am going to delete the animation set. Goodbye, Mr. Scout. And I'm going to do, I'm going to create an animation set for a new model, and I'm going to do it the way I should have done in the first place, which is to select hwm slash scout.mdl. Excuse me. All right, and we're back to moving things around here in the motion editor. Press the shift key. Again, one of the best tricks to make that follow the world geometry. I'm not going to do anything special here except just kind of put him on his place because the first thing I'm going to do is import the animation I just exported. Click open, and if you notice, now if you did this uh, bef uh, one way, you might see a bunch of red in here. That's why I changed the model first. And so then I say OK, and then if I scrub, hey, we've got everything we need, and phonemes. That is a good sign. That means that we've got all the little things that we need so that we can actually do what we wanted to do in the first place. So I'm going to go down here to dialog, add clip to track. Wicked. All right. Show waveform. Hooray. Extract phonemes. Wicked. Oh, that looks good. So let's see what happens. There we go. And there is your tip of the day. So the trick is, in review, what I did was I spawned the low resolution scout model that doesn't have the ability to do the facial animations. Then I did a very simple animation sequence with it. Uh, this was on the assumption that you have done invested a whole bunch of work and then you wanted to be able to move that work over to a model that can actually do the facial animations. First trick is import the one that can do the facial animations in the first place. But if you find yourself in this quandary, what you want to do is go into the animation set editor, right click it and select the uh, animation set in the element viewer, then change the model. Be really careful, again, using the, uh, the element viewer because you can bork up your entire save, your whole session can get screwed six ways to Sunday. So be careful there. But once you've done that, you have told the animation set, hey, you're associating this with a different model and we're going to have all of these different hooks. It's not going to fix the user interface, so you're still going to have to uh, export and re-import the animation. But the reason that you have to change the model in the background first is because if you export the animation and then just change the model and import it, the exported animation won't have 
all of the little things that you need and your model will, will look like it got ran through a mangle. It'll look, you know, I, I did it a few times and it ended up making the scout look like he'd been pulled through uh, uh, a four inch wide hole and then run over with a steamroller. It was actually quite funny, but certainly wouldn't be helpful. So again, if you need to do this, you change the model in the element viewer by just going in and typing in the model name and be careful doing that. Then you export the animation that you want then you change the, you delete the old animation set, create a brand new animation set and put it where you want it and import your animation sequence. Now, this is still going to require some manual changes afterwards, especially if you have something where the guy's moving around and doing stuff. You're still going to have to tweak it, but at least you won't have to redo everything. So for, the, for what it's worth, I do hope that's useful to some of you who have found yourself in this quandary, or for those of you who <laughs> will find yourself in this quandary. Uh, and that is your Source Filmmaker tip of the day number two. Again, I'm Jimmer Linz, and I appreciate you listening and enjoy using Source Filmmaker. Have a great day.